Alright, so what's up everyone? Today I'm going to be showing you a full setup for under $60 that you should be able to do easily at home. So, first of all, the computer. I got it for a pretty good deal. I only paid $30 for it off eBay. And the computer came with a graphics card. So, if you want to use that, you can buy that little adapter right there off Amazon for about $5. And I bought 4 gigabytes of RAM for $7. And I also got that graphics card for about $13. And the PCI extender over there. And that was about $5. And the monitor and speakers were free. So let me go ahead and show you the inside of the computer. So as you can see, it's a fairly clean setup. We have a very small ATI graphics card here. Um, and I believe the connector name on it is DMS59. And we have a 500 gigabyte blue desktop hard drive. I did have to buy that separate and two gigabytes of RAM, and a Pentium dual core. However, for about 10 to $15, you can up this to a Core 2 Quad, which would be a lot better. So what we're going to be doing is probably upgrading the graphics card, but we're going to do a test with it, just how it is, how it came out of the box. So I'll go ahead and fire it up, and we'll run Cinebench. Alright, so many moments later, it did boot up into Windows 10. However, my 2GB stick of RAM would not work to boot up, so I had to put the 4GB stick. So if you want to actually use it with Windows 10, you will have to buy the 4GB stick. But considering it's not that bad or that much, then it's not a huge deal. And I was going to run Cinebench, but for some reason, this will not run Cinebench. <laughs> it just freezes and glitches out. I'm pretty sure that's due to the very, very slow Pentium dual core processor. But we'll see. So we are going to run some games, get some benchmarks on that to see what we get. So let's go ahead and launch Need for Speed Underground 2. Alright, so it did launch, however, it is very, very glitchy. This is with the graphics set on high. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the game and see how it plays. Alright, so it finally got into the game, and it is unplayable. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, I mean, yeah, you can see how bad that is glitching. I'd say about one frame every three seconds. <laughs> so, it's pretty bad. Now, as much as I would want to say it would be the processor, I'm pretty sure it's just the graphics card. So... We're going to upgrade it with the other graphics card before we do anything else because I did try to run um, games such as Asphalt 8 or Asphalt 9 and when they did launch, they were not even playable. So let's go ahead and swap out the graphics card and see if that makes a difference. Alright, so we have one more game here to try, and that is Minecraft, and Minecraft actually is running surprisingly well, however, uh, you have to have any of the fancy graphics or anything turned off, and the render distance set to 6 chunks for it to be this smooth, because any higher than 8 it starts getting pretty glitchy, but Minecraft runs surprisingly well. So what we're going to do 
is go ahead and swap out the GPU in it and see if that makes a difference now. Alright, so I took our old graphics card out and here is our new graphics card that was about 10 or $15 and the PCI extender was only $5. So let's go ahead and put it in. Now, unfortunately, we cannot close the case anymore with our graphics card in there with the extender. Now, technically, if you want to, you could go and, uh, like, take that hard drive out, put a small SSD in, um, take the hard drive cooler out, and dremel a spot in the case out, and you could put a graphics card in there with the case closed. But I really don't want to do that right now, so we're just going to use an extender. So I'll go ahead and put this in and show you the setup we're going to be using. All right, so here's how we're going to have to do this. I did have to move the one speaker over there. And by the way, those speakers were free. And I mean, they're not the greatest, but they were free. And the monitor was also free. And I mean, it works. <laughs> So, let's go ahead and see if this still works. Uh, probably help if I connected power. <laughs> well, we'll go ahead and connect power, power it up, and make sure everything works. And we'll see how some games run, and if they run now. Another quick tip here. For some reason, these Optiplexes, whenever you fire them up, they always come up with this. I don't know if it's something with Windows 10 or something with the BIOS, but every Optiplex I have has done this. And you just hit the F1 key and it just goes on to Windows. So just a quick tip there. All right, so it's booted up into Windows 10 and already things are looking a lot better. The screen is actually at its right resolution and task manager is now detecting our GPU. So I think what the problem was before, why hardly anything would launch, is because the other graphics card I don't think is even support on Windows 10, and this one is. So as you can see, we have six gigabytes of memory, and then our CPU, which is the Pentium dual core, so let's go ahead and watch Need for Speed Underground 2 and see if other games actually launch now. All right, so already this is a world of difference. So yeah, that graphics card was definitely our problem because this is running buttery smooth now with the graphics turned all the way up see it's working pretty well now so let's go and try to launch some other games and see if they actually work now so I was a little surprised with this but Forza Street actually launches now and it's actually running not half bad I mean definitely not good but not bad. Uh, you can see the resolution. I don't know where you can see it, but it's set way, way down. You can definitely tell the resolution isn't very high, but it's playable now. So that's pretty good. And Minecraft, even, you can set it to about 20 chunks and it still works fine. And I haven't really tested it beyond that, but Minecraft seems to work pretty good now. So next we're going to try Asphalt 9. Now this will take a little while because unfortunately there's a big update that has to install. 
So let's just wait for that to finish and I'll be right back after that finishes and see if it launches. Alright, so Asphalt 9 just launched and it seems to be running pretty smoothly. And it actually launched this time, so let's see how it does. Um, now, let's just, let's just have to update, but this runs very well. Um, now, outside of my skill, <laughs> uh, but it seems to be running pretty well, as you can see, and it's very smooth. And, but honestly, Asphalt 9 really doesn't have to have that much power to run it, but for what it is, it runs pretty good. So, let's talk about overall usability of this. Now, I will show you some just daily usage, what you would normally be doing, I guess you could say. Uh, for switching tabs, like on Microsoft Edge, if that's your browser, for me, it works fine. Uh, doing web browsing seems to work fine. And even YouTube at 1080p works absolutely fine. As you can see, I'm playing a YouTube video right now, and it looks like it's going fine. So, would I recommend you do something like this? Yes and no. So, for the price, what I would do is definitely get a Core 2 Quad, because you can get those for super cheap, and a Core 2 Quad will run Forza, and you can get a small little GTX or whatever 970 and put in the case, do some case modifications, bump the RAM up, RAM up to 8 gigabytes, get an SSD, and that would honestly all be under a hundred dollars and that'd be good for a lot of games, but right now it is good for Asphalt, um, even CSGO, other just common games will work on it. Now once you start getting graphic intense, it probably, they probably won't work that great. Uh, I know for a fact Forza, that would be a dream for this, it, yeah, not gonna run, unless you get like a Core 2 Quad. So, Alright, sorry for the interruption there, but I'm back. So... Let's talk about the pricing of this. Um, for $60, I would definitely recommend it. The only thing is definitely get the Core 2 Quad and overall user experience is pretty good the way it is and even some very light gaming on it seems to work pretty well. And the free monitor, the free speakers, the speakers aren't very bad. Um, but yeah, I definitely recommend this and I hope you enjoyed the video and I would like to let you know that here in the next video, we're going to be getting a very big upgrade with our camera and mic and I, I do apologize for the poor quality, but we're going to be getting a very big upgrade. So hopefully it'll make the videos more enjoyable. And I hope you've enjoyed the videos, and I'll see you in the next one.